So this is a an example problem for doing some basic regression analysis. We're using a data file which is called Maths and Stats Grades XLSX. Um, you can find a link to that in the description to this video if you want to replicate the work done here. The type of information in this data set is um, information for a set of students, I think from memory it's around 900 students, where we have their names, we know whether they're male or female, and we have grades for two course units, um, a maths grade and a stats grade. So th these are all randomly simulated grades, but they have realistic properties, we, properties of grades we would see at um, my university. That advanced maths course is a semester one course and the advanced stats course is a semester two course. So um, that is very important in what we what we do later. The names are of course also randomly generated. So the first task is prepare the data, create a variable called female that takes a value of one for every female student and zero for every male student. So basically we want an extra variable here Whenever we have a female student, like here, Leia or Sandra, we want this variable to take a value one, and for all others, we want this to take a value zero. Um, this is also what we call a dummy variable. <clears throat> so uh, then rearrange the columns in the data file such that you have the new female variable next to the advanced RAS variable. Okay, so, well, that means we want that column to be somewhere here. And the, uh, the reason for that will become obvious in a moment. So let's switch to the data file. Here's the data file. As I said, the link to that file is in the notes to this video. Here we have our students. Let's actually check how many of these we, uh, we have. We have around 800, 801 students. So let's create that variable. So we create a new uh, column here and we call it female and so we want to translate m into zero and f into one. Well, one way to do that is use the if function. So if that value is equal to f then we want this cell c2 now to take value of one otherwise zero. That's what the uh, this function does. So what you see here, let me just annotate that. So we have the condition, this is the condition. And if that is true, then the result should be that value. So that's for the condition being true. And if the condition is not true, then we should take this value in this case, zero. So let's see whether that works, press enter. Okay, so we have a zero here for male, and let's copy that down, and that seems to have worked. Okay, sometimes you have to just check that the cell references are correct, they are correct. Usually when I calculate such a value, I don't want to keep the formula in here. What I do is I'll copy, so I highlight the column, press Control c to copy, and then I paste values and now you can see it's just the zeros and ones and not anymore the formulas. Okay, so we've done our first uh, our first job. Let's see what the next task is. Estimate the oh, great summary statistics. Mean standard deviation 25th, 75th percentile minimum maximum for advanced stats advanced maths, advanced stats, and the female variable. What's the meaning of the sample average of the female variable? Remember, the female variable is our dummy variable. So let's go back to, to this. We could, of course, calculate um, means and variances all individually, but let's see what tool Excel has given us via the data analysis toolbox. For those who don't see, if you go to the data tab, you should uh, see on the top 
on the top right here you should see the data analysis uh, toolbox if you don't see that data analysis toolbox you have to go to file and um, options and then to add-ins and you have to uh, go to Excel add-ins and add the analysis tool back. I've already included that if your box is unticked, tick it and click OK and you should get that um, analysis tool pack here. So it, there's an option called descriptive statistics. So let's see what uh, what we get from this input range we want summary statistics for three variables so let's actually highlight all three variables and see whether that uh, works we'll go all the way to the bottom i also highlighted the names in row one so i'll tick that labels in first row we need to tell excel where we want the output so we want that somewhere here and um what do we want we want summary statistics okay here we go here we have our summary statistics for the three variables female advanced maths and advanced stats so you can see advanced maths on average the grade was 64 and a half approximately for advanced stats the average grade was 61 that's very normal for british higher education courses if you're in the US, that sounds slow, but that's the way how we grade in the UK. We have, um, yeah, we have standard deviations here. Okay, so 14 and 16 grades. So there's quite a fair bit of variation in the grades. We have minimum and maximum grades in advanced stats. Actually, someone got 100, not in maths. Okay, and we have 801 students. So, what now the question was female, what does that mean variable mean? Okay, what's the meaning of the sample mean for the female variable? Recall that that female variable was a dummy variable, one for all females and zero for all males. In that case, that value of 0.425 means that 42.5% in our sample have a value of one that means are female okay so if you have a mean a sample mean for a dummy variable that tells you the proportion of observations for which the condition which we use to create that dummy variable i.e is someone female is correct so here we have 42 and a half percent females okay so that was the uh, summary statistics let's go back to our task sheet now we shall estimate the following regression model on the left hand side the explained variable advanced stats and on the right hand side the explanatory variable advanced maths so this important here what we said earlier advanced maths is a course that happens before advanced stats which is a second semester course so it wouldn't make sense to run this regression the other way around although you could excel doesn't know what makes sense and what doesn't um, but logically if at all it will be the advanced maths grade which will explain variation in the advanced stats grade so let's run this regression we again go to data and the data analysis um, toolbox now we want the regression module so what's our input range the y range oh that's the advanced stats grade that is here and then we want the explanatory variable range that is going to be the advanced stats and that's in our column advanced maths that's in our column d again i'm highlighting the first row the name as well so i tick labels that makes interpreting the result easier and i think that's all we need to do are uh, the output range where do we want that result let's put it underneath here and let's press ok and here is our regression result so what can we see let's see what our task was here 
want to interpret the estimated values for beta naught and beta 1. So let's do that. Let's interpret these values. We're having an intercept. So what we've basically estimated here is a, a model which is um, advanced maths is equal to, let me just move something around here so I can see better. Here we go. Advanced maths is equal to, here's the intercept, 26, and I'll round to one number here, 0.4 plus 0 0.54, 0 0.54 times, sorry, here we have advanced stats times the advanced maths grade, maths grade. And if you put a hat on here, so we are our predicted advanced stats grade, and still properly, our predicted advanced stats grade is 26.4 plus 0.54 times the advanced maths grade. So it means if you had a grade of zero in semester one advanced maths, which nobody in the sample has, then we would expect that your advanced stats grade based on that model is 26. In Britain, that is a fail grade. So that would be the interpretation for the intercept. If you had an advanced maths grade of zero, that would be the predicted grade. Now, since we call our range, our range of values here for advanced maths was the minimum was 20. So a grade of zero is well outside our uh, experience for the sample. So we shouldn't interpret that intercept really in this case. What about that 0.54 advanced maths? Well, that means that on average, as we have an increase of one unit in the advanced maths grade, so if that, if you have plus one for the advanced maths grade, we would expect the advanced stats grade to increase by 0.54. Okay, so that means, you know, um, of course we tell that our students working in semester one, uh, for advanced maths is really worth its while because you're also improving uh, your grades in semester two advanced stats because you're getting better skills and that's what this coefficient tells us here. So the next task was to calculate a hypothesis test of, let's go back and I think there's actually a typo Okay, so where is your hypothesis test? Test the following hypothesis. Um, that one is incorrect. So let me write it down. H naught that beta one is smaller or equal to 0 0.5, and H a that beta one is larger than 0 0.5. Okay, so that is going to be our hypothesis. We want to we want to test. So let's go to here. So we want to test H naught that beta one is smaller or equal to 0 0.5 and H a that beta one is larger than 0 0.5. So here this coefficient here is our estimate for beta one that's beta one hat. Okay, and that one here was beta naught had. So we're using T statistics or T tests to do that. Our T test is going to be beta one hat minus the value in the null hypothesis 0 0.5 divided by the standard error of beta one hat. So we know what beta one hat is. And so we know what beta one hat is. That is 0 0.5 5418 then minus 0 0.5 divided by the standard error the standard error of beta 1 hat is this guy here so 0 0.0369 oh, let's round 
to that number. So this is our uh, test statistic. We will calculate the value in a moment in, in Excel. Now we know that our t-test, the t-test is t-distributed with number of observations, with degrees of freedom of number of observations minus the number of estimated coefficients. So t would be 8 or 1 minus 2, because we have two estimated coefficients. That's a very large number of degrees of freedom. That means essentially we are using the standard normal distribution. And we know that we will reject the null hypothesis in our case if we have a very large t-statistic because we are having a right tail test or if the p-value of our test is smaller than whatever significance level we choose. So let's calculate a p-value and just see how strong the evidence is for or against the null hypothesis. So let's go back to uh, Excel and do these calculations. So our t-test is 0.5418 minus 0.5, that comes from the null hypothesis, divided by the standard error. This is our t-test, 1.1335. So now we may wonder what is the uh, p-value. We're having a right tail test. So we are looking at the probability to the right of 1.1335. So we can calculate that by 1 minus t dot distribution of that value. And we need the decrease of freedom, that's 799. And we want the cumulative value. So the p-value of our test is 0.1287. That means if the null hypothesis was true, meaning that coefficient is equal to 0.5, then there is around a 13% probability that we get the type of evidence we saw in our sample or more extreme or larger than 0.5. That is a fairly substantial probability. It's not small enough for us to reject the null hypothesis. So we would not reject the null hypothesis here. So let's go back to the task and see what we are yet to do. Calculate a 90% confidence interval for beta 1. So how do we calculate that confidence interval? Let me take that value away. So what we need is our confidence interval is going to be calculated by beta 1 hat which is going to be this, which is this value, plus minus the standard error of beta 1 hat, and then times the value from the t-distribution. Our t-distribution comes from uh, is 1 with 7, 9, 9 degrees of freedom. And we need to uh, recall what type of confidence interval we want to calculate. It's a 90% confidence interval. So alpha is 10%, so it's 0.10 divided by 2 is what we need from the t distribution. So we have that value, beta 1 hat, that's this one. We have se beta 1, that is this one, standard error of beta 1 hat. Uh, that one here was beta 1 hat. So what we need is that t statistic, and then we can calculate this. So let me take away this. Let's go to Excel and find that t um, a over 2, okay, t alpha half. So what we use here is the t inverse function, t inverse function. And which probability do we want? So 90%, that means we need 5% in each tail. So for instance, we are using the 0 0.95. Probability decrease of freedom was 799. We could have used the standard normal because a t distribution of 799 decrease of freedom is basically the normal dis decrease at uh, the normal distribution. So it's 1.646. And so now we calculate the lower bound and the upper bound of the confidence interval. The lower bound is going to be this value minus that value times the standard error. 
and the upper bound is going to be our sample estimate plus the value from the t distribution times the standard error. Okay, this is our confidence interval. All right, so here's our confidence interval. That means if we drew 100 samples, if we calculated 100 confidence intervals in the same way as this is a 90% confidence interval, we should expect the true value to be in that confidence interval around 90% of times in 90 out of the 100 samples. Of course, here in this case, we don't know what the true value is. We only have that one confidence interval. It gives you an expression of how certain or uncertain you are about your estimate. So before we continue with the rest, I wanted to point out what we, so let's delete that again. We calculated before a hypothesis test with this null hypothesis and this alternative hypothesis. And some of you may have uh, thought, hey, don't we have some information about the t-statistic and the p-value here? And yes, indeed, we have that information, but you need to recognize that the values which are calculated here always refer to this set of hypotheses. H0 is that beta1 is equal to zero, and HA that beta1 is unequal to zero, or whatever you call that coefficient. These, this is the set of hypotheses which Excel or most other, and basically all other statistical softwares, automatically give you the T stat for and the P value for. You see, it's very small p-value, so that null hypothesis would clearly be rejected. But that was not the hypothesis we wanted to test. We had a different value, not 0, but 0 0.5, and indeed we had a one-tail test. So only if this is exactly the hypothesis you want to test can you use these values directly. Otherwise, you have to refer, as you, as you noted, we used our coefficient estimate and our standard error, and then you can calculate the t-test for any hypothesis you want to test. All right, so let's go to the next question. Okay, so we calculated this, we did this. Find the students called Alfonso and Isabel and figure out whether they performed better than predicted by the above model. Which student overachieved relative to this prediction most? Okay, so let's um, answer these two questions. Let's go back to, to the spreadsheet. So let's find Alfonso and Isabella. Um, okay, we'll just find Alfonso. Ah, didn't, didn't find Alfonso. Christ. Find. Alfonso, here's Alfonso. So let me just copy that and paste that somewhere, somewhere here. And Isabel is here. And let's copy that. Let's copy that here. So we I'm sorry, need to copy the heading as well, so we know what we are, what we are looking at here. So this is what we have the information we have on these two students. So let's calculate the predicted value. So had advanced stats. Uh, the predicted value for advanced stats. Now what's the predicted predicted value for Alfonso? It's going to be the intercept plus the slope coefficient times the advanced mass grade of Alfonso. And what about Isabella? It's going to be the intercept plus the slope times the advanced maths grade of Isabel. Here we go. I have a parenthesis too many. So, of course, we don't need that. So, the predicted grade for Alfonso is 76.8, and for Isabella is 56.7. Now, what they actually got is this 87 and 80. 
So what is our um, error for those, our sort of prediction error? Well, the actual observation is that minus the predicted value is that. Now we can just copy that down. So you can see Alfonso overachieved against the prediction by 10 marks, whereas Isabella overachieved against her prediction by 23 marks. Yeah, so these are sort of the prediction errors our uh, regression model delivers. So then the question was, which of the students overachieved the most? Well, we can do the same sort of calculation. We can do that for all students. So let's calculate it here for Kenzie. Okay. Now, their prediction was that value, intercept, plus that coefficient times the advanced maths grade, which is this grade. So if I copy, now I want to do that and put that in every column. Now, of course, if I copy that, my cells are moving. So I need to fix that cell. So I put dollars in front of both the column and the row, and I fix that cell, put dollars in front of the column and the row. Now we can copy this all the way down and all the way up. So that was hat advanced stat grade. And then we wanted to calculate the error. Uh, let me just insert a column here, create some separation. So in the error then was the actual grade minus the predicted grade. There we go. So as I said before, when I have calculated cells, what I like to do once I'm happy with the calculation, am I happy? Yeah, that works correct. I highlight that, I control C, copy, and then I paste values. So I now have these as values. Now I could sort this data, sort by error, because I want to know who overperformed uh, the most, so from largest to smallest, that is indeed the largest value here. So Cassius had overperformed the most, got a grade in advanced stats of 91. The model predicted a 51.354. Okay, so that's what the model predicted. That's what Cassius got, what he got. That's over prediction by almost 40 grades. But then, of course, there will be students which underperform. So here, for instance, we have Jamison, who had a predicted grade of 68, only got to 21. So that student underperformed by 47 grades. Okay, so, and what you will actually find is, let's actually do that, whenever you run a regression model like this, that if you calculate the average, of of these errors so that will be from average from uh, g2 to g802 you find the ar average to be basically zero so here you see negative 1.08 but e to the negative 14 14 zeros or 13 zeros in front of the one okay so that's basically zero and you will always find that in a regression model that on average the errors are zero so the next task here is, let's move to part D, calculate averages for the advanced maths and advanced stats variables separately for males and females. So to do that, there are several ways to do that in Excel. Um, there's sort of very basic ways we could just um, sort this by the female variable. Now you have a block of females, you could just calculate the average here and the average here all the way until, I said 400 and something until here where we have the last female and then you could calculate the averages for the values down there. So that's a way to do that. Perhaps the most sophisticated way to do that is to use pivot tables, but I'm not gonna introduce pivot tables here. 
what we're going to do is something slightly different. So let's create a little table here. Um, we say want to calculate advanced maths and advanced stats. Average grades for females and for males. So that's what we want. So what you can do is there's a function called average if. Okay, so let's do that. And basically there are three inputs, okay? Range, criteria, average range. The values of which you want to calculate is the last input, so we get to that. First, you have to say, what's your criterion? Now, our criterion variable is this one, C, okay? because that tells us whether we're male, or we're looking at a male or female. So I highlight that column. Then we say, for instance, we want to calculate the average if we have a female, if that column value is one, and then what do we want to calculate the average of? Well, of the advanced uh, stats, or oh, that's the advanced maths grades, that is column D. So, let's enter that. So, what we have here is what we calculated is the advanced maths, average advanced maths grades for all females. So if we, so what I do is I'll just copy this, escape out of here, go into the next cell. And now if we want to calculate the um, average grade, so if I just copy that, I of course get exactly the same, but now I want males. So what changes here is the condition. The female variable takes a value of zero. And so here we have the average male grade, 63 and a half approximately. So for advanced maths, females do a little bit better than males. What about advanced stats? So let me just copy that again. I'll go to that new cell here, paste that here. Now what we want to change is now we want to calculate the average grades of advanced stats, which is in the E column. So I just go in here and change the D to an E and press enter. So here we have the average stats grades for females. And then again, I'll copy that and paste that in here. Now we want males, so we want zero in the female column. So you can see that for advanced stats, males do somewhat better than females. So I get on average 62, whereas males get 60.7. Okay, so we're approaching the end of this question, last part. Now estimate the following regression model. So what we now have is advanced stats as a dependent variable, and we have two explanatory variables, advanced maths and this variable, which is our dummy variable indicating whether a particular student is a male or a female. And then we basically want to repeat all of the exercises which he did for the simple regression model. So let's get let's get cracking here. So we'll go back to our data sheet. So we'll uh, put that in here. So we go to data analysis, regression. And basically everything is the same, but for the um, input X range, because we have now two variables. So I'll go back in here. And this is now important that in Excel, you have the two variables which you want to use as explanatory variables next to each other because then we just highlight those two columns which contain our explanatory variables. Okay, output range we want to change as well. We want to put that here. And okay. And here's our multiple regression model. So let's again see what we what we actually did here. So we estimated a regression model where we have as our dependent variable at the advanced stats grade. Then we have that explained by a constant. We're now calling these gammas, these coefficients, gamma naught plus gamma one times the female variable, the order of these variables doesn't really matter. 
oh no, we had, uh, well, it matters in the sense that I want to be consistent with, um, with the, I, don't know, I want to be consistent with the, Uh, with the questions, I need to uh, use, uh, to be consistent, I need to use advanced maths here. Uh, yeah, advanced maths plus gamma 2 times the female variable. Okay, and what our regression here gives us is, it gives us estimates for these gamma naught, gamma one, and gamma two hat, and then we get an estimate for the advanced depth grade. So here, this is our intercept, that is gamma naught hat. Then here we have our female variable, so that's the coefficient gamma two hat, and here we have gamma one hat, the coefficient for advanced maths. So basically what we get from here is that the prediction is um, 27, Point zero around to one times gamma one is 0 0.54, so that's very similar. 549 times the advanced maths grade plus nine, actually minus two point five nine, two point five nine times the female variable. So what does that now mean? How do we interpret these coefficients? Firstly, the intercept. We interpret the intercept by setting all other variables to zero. So female zero makes sense because that's a male. Advanced stats zero. So we're thinking about a male who achieved a grade of zero in advanced maths. We would predict a grade of 27 in advanced stats for that person. That's how we interpret the intercept again, because zero advanced maths isn't really part of our sample. The minimum grade was 20. We shouldn't really interpret that value. What about, let's go to the advanced maths coefficient. The value is very similar, so it's approximately 0 0.55. So an increase of one in the advanced maths grade on average results in an increase of 0.55 in the advanced stats grade, everything else being equal. So what does that mean? That means think about a male student, for instance, if a male student increases the advanced maths grade by one unit, on average, we should expect an advanced stats increase by 0.55 grades. Or you could think of a female student who increases their advanced maths grade by one unit, and we would expect on average an increase in the advanced stats grade of 0.55. But we can't think of increasing the grade and changing the gender, okay? Ceteris paribus, everything else being equal, that's how we interpret this coefficient. In the same spirit, what does this coefficient mean? Negative 2.59. Well, it means leaving everything else constant, so, as student with the same grade, if we increase this variable by one, so thinking going from a male to a female, we would expect the grade to decrease by 2.59, negative 2.59. And that's what we, that's how we'd interpret that. On average here, females do worse than males. And that's exactly what we actually saw previously here, because we saw that the advanced in advanced stats, males did better than females. Okay, the difference here isn't the difference between these two values isn't exactly the same as that negative 2.59, because males had different advanced maths grades. Okay, so that's how we interpret these uh, these co these coefficients here. The next task now was test the following hypothesis. Uh, let me write this down. So we were testing the hypothesis H naught that gamma two 
is equal to zero against the alternative hypothesis that gamma two is unequal to zero. Now that was exactly the type of hypothesis we said Excel does automatically. That test is automatically tested by Excel. So gamma two, that's our female coefficient. So what's the probability that this coefficient in the population is actually zero? In the sample, it's negative 2.59. But what about the population? Well, the T stat here is negative 2.4259. The P value is 1.5% or 0.15. So that's fairly small. That means that if truly there was no difference between males and females, that means that coefficient gamma 2 is, is zero. The probability of getting the sample information we got all more extreme or further away from zero, we are having a two-tailed test. Okay, that's a two-tailed test. That probability is one and a half percent, 0 0.15, 0 0.015. Now, whether you reject on the basis of that evidence, the null hypothesis or not, that depends on what your significance level is, what amount of type one error you allow yourself. Say you're using a significance level of 5%, then we would reject the null hypothesis because the p-value is smaller. So next task is to calculate a 90% confidence interval. Okay, 90% confidence interval. We do exactly what we did before. We need to calculate that um, T um, alpha half value. So we use uh, T dot inf. Uh, it's a 90% confidence interval. So we're looking, for instance, for 0.95, in the right tail. Decrease of freedom is now 801 observations minus three estimated coefficients. So that is 798, basically unchanged. And we want no, that's all we need. So that that is still the the t value we use, and then we calculate the lower bound and the upper bound of our confidence interval, and that is going to be our estimated coefficient minus that value times the standard error. So it's the same as we did in the previous task, and the upper bound is the estimated coefficient plus that t value times the standard error. Okay, so our 90% confidence interval is reaches from negative 4.35 to negative 0.83. So that's an expression of the uncertainty we have about this coefficient. Next task, find students Alphonse and Isabel again and figure out whether they perform better than predicted by the above model. So let's take our information here again. We'll copy it down here. Now we know we're basically still using the same, we're using this model. We're using this equation here to calculate our predicted values. So that is now hat advanced stats. So it's the predicted advanced stats grade. It's using a different model than previously. So we will get different values here. So it's going to be the intercept plus this coefficient times the advanced maths grade plus, ah, sorry, I need to get the order right. So that is the advanced maths coefficient times advanced maths plus the coefficient for female times the value in the female variable, either times zero or times one. So that's the predicted value for Alfonso, for Isabella, let's do it again, intercept plus the coefficient to maths times the advanced maths grade plus the coefficient for female times the value of female and since here female is one that means we subtract negative 2.59 so here are our predicted values and then let's calculate the errors again that is the actual grade minus the predicted grade so if you compare these two 
to the ones we calculated previously, you see that the over prediction now still Alfonso over predicts, but less it was previously a bit more than 10. Now it's a bit less than nine. And Isabella still over achieves and she over achieves a little more now. Okay, and that's because we predicted females to do a little worse. Okay, and we can do the same exercise and let's actually um, just replace these two columns and do the same exercise for all students. So we can calculate the predicted value intercept and now we fix immediately, we already know that value, plus the advanced maths coefficient fixed times the advanced maths grade plus the female coefficient fixed times the value in the female variable. Okay, so and then we can copy that down all the way, copy it up all the way. Uh, we can calculate the error, which is again the achieved grade minus the predicted grade. Copy that down, highlight, copy, paste values, and then we sort according to the error from largest to smallest. And so previously we had Cassius, who was the highest overachiever. Now it is Yareli, uh, a female now, uh, because the prediction for females went down, so that student has overachieved more. Let's go back to our question sheet. Okay, we've done all of our question. We've done all of our questions. So download the data from underneath in the notes of the uh, of this video, and you can replicate all of this, and you can play a little bit with these data.